cool Howard Tucker from Manhattan okay. and back to her. Okay. Her sure, sure, sure. But if we have fans calling and I want to be able to serve the fans as well. Sure. Yeah. There's some calls coming up. Yeah. Howard is a big fan. A big, big fan. He's a friend of mine also. Oh, okay. Happy New Year. P-A-T, yes, indeedy, and uh, Julie Budd is here, good to have you here, Julie. Thank you so much. And by this, by the way, this show is brought to you in part by Enzo's Restaurant, Italian Restaurant, 1998 Williams Bridge Road in the heart of the Bronx, 718-409-3828. That's a great number for the greatest Italian restaurant in the world, and also in the five boroughs as well. So it's 718-409-3828. Enzo's Restaurant is a perfect place for classic Italian dinners located in Morris Park section of the Bronx, just minutes away from Arthur Avenue. Open for lunch and dinner, too. Our classic Italian menu has been recognized as one of the top in the Bronx, New York. Enzo's Italian Restaurant, you get 1998 Williams Bridge Road in Bronx, New York. 718-409-3828. Make a reservation right now. So there you go. Let's go to the phones. Some of the fans of uh, Julie Bud. let's start with Howard Tucker. Our number, by the way, is 212. 219-9695. Howard? What a pleasure it is to talk to you. I mean, I love your roses and rainbows. I can listen to it over and over and over. In addition to uh, Ed Sullivan, I grew up with you on Merv Griffin and Mike Douglas. Oh, my God. I love those shows. They were the best, weren't they? They were. I used to love them. I'd get home from school, and even in college, I'd watch Mike Douglas all the time. Now, what I have to ask you now, I'm sure you've been asked this many times, but this really sticks in my mind. Now, Mike Douglas asked you um, what your reaction was to being referred to as the young Barbra Streisand. And if I remember correctly... Your comment, you didn't bat an eyelash, you said that you were both Jewish, both right. Brooklyn, both had powerful voices, which you certainly do, but that you didn't think your performing styles were that much alike. Do you still feel the same way? I'm and I'd also like to know if you have a special career moment that stands out. Well, thank you, first of all, for calling in. It's so lovely to hear from you. Thank you. And, you know, I've, I've been pretty consistent. I, I, that was a long time ago, Howard, wasn't it? <laughs> I, I, but, but I feel the same way. No, I don't remember Merv Griffin, but I remember the Mike uh, show. I loved that show, too, yeah, Howard. I know, to I know exactly what you mean. But, you know, I Hello. still feel the same way, Howard, you know. I, I think it's more of a physicality or, or the fact that we're both Jewish and we come from Brooklyn and, you know, there's that kind of neighborhood girl thing going on. But, but really, I mean, if you played Barbara's record and then you played my record, you would really see... A, a, a tremendous difference in, you know, the, the tones right. of the voices and so forth and so on. But I, I, I always felt that it was more of a physical or, or, I don't know, kind of a neighborhood girl kind of thing than it really was um, a, a vocal or even a style. So, yeah, you remember it right, Howard. You have a good memory. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm impressed. And then you asked me, you asked me about a favorite moment. I think that if was... If you have a favorite career moment or what career moment stands out. You've had such a great career. Well, I'll tell you something that nobody would even expect. Like, somebody would say, oh, it's when I worked with Frank Sinatra. Oh, it's when I worked with Liberace. And yes, they were incredible moments, Howard. I, I mean, how could you say they weren't? But the thing that really stands out in my mind, I was 12 years old. I had never been on TV before. And I was backstage at the Merv Griffin show, and the curtain was just going to go up. And they said, ladies and gentlemen, Julie Budd, hey, the curtain goes from? up, and I see, the first thing I see, center, okay, What's your name? is my pop, oh, right in the audience, Studio. watching me on the Merv Griffin show. Wow. And, it, it, you know, I guess it's because I'm older now, and I look back, and I miss my parents so uh, much. But it was such a great moment, Howard, minutes. you know, the curtain goes up, and the first thing that my eyes set upon wasn't the conductor, it wasn't Merv, really it was my father. That's great. I'll never forget that as long as I live. Two one two nine six six ten fifty nine. Thank you, and hi Pam. And thank you for for calling in, Howard. You're a doll. Thank you. Thanks, Howard. Let's go to uh, Bob from uh, Boston, Massachusetts, calling in all the way from up there. Hi, Bob. Yeah. Hey, Julie. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for calling. Well, we just we we just we 
just kind of connected through Facebook recently. Oh my goodness, you're a Facebook friend. <laughs> hello, hello, Mom. <laughs> and I remember, yeah, I used that term years ago. Right. And that affects me as well. Um, I used to work for a major bank uh, in the city. But I walked in, didn't know who he was, we started chatting, and I learned he was your manager. And I met you, I think, that night at the Russian Tea Club. Oh, God, wasn't that a great place, Bob? Yeah, and you were so sweet, and, uh... Thank I you. Said, and your name popped up, and I said, man, I'm going to get in touch with Julie again. Oh, aren't you great? I'm so happy that you called. Isn't Facebook fabulous? I mean, it really does allow people to get together. I, I think it's just great that you contacted me. I don't even know if you remember me, but um, I had something silly to say to you, right? Like, of you that that we're connected again and Facebook is a lot of fun and we should tell our friends out there right that I really do answer these letters <laughs> the host of the, wait a second Bob the host of the Russian tea room a dedication, a tribute to yeah, Danny Styles' I life next week. Well, you know, Danny That's Styles right. played for oh, me wow. when I was on the Merv Griffin show. He was in the band. Oh, That's how God. I knew Danny Styles. I didn't realize that. Yeah, he used to. That's he was in the house band on the Merv Griffin show. Let's put the needle on the record. Of it, but he said, I, I forget. But uh, yeah. I think it's great. It's just so out there. Yeah. Oh well, I think I think it's fabulous that you have because it's great that when people are are really letting the youngsters hear that music too. But you know what? I'm going to be just for the for the listeners and for you too, Bob. I'm going to be uh, at Barnes and Noble on April 28th at 6:30. I have a new CD coming out. It's called They Wrote the Songs. And you'll enjoy this, Bob. I'm going to be bringing my band inside the store. It's going to be really. It's going to be great. And then really I and then experience. I open up uh, at the Metropolitan Room here in New York, May 15th to May 18th, and I'll premiere some of the music from the new CD. I've been there, and I, I want to get there. And I I've had the pleasure of working with guys like Rick Bogart, you know, and sure. and I met Larry Luger, wonderful jazz guitarist, and I think do some gigs. So. Uh, I would love to get a chance to finally see you after a whole Well, I mean, come down, come down to Barnes, God. come down yeah. to Barnes and Noble, or to the Metropolitan Room, and and, Thanks, and I'll say hi. I'm sorry, I'm sorry about the name, but hey, listen, Julie, it's, it's great to catch up. And Thanks so much. And by the way, by the way, Bob, say that say a little, say a little Lauren and Wally up in Boston for me. Okay. Enjoy. Have a nice night. Good night, Bob. Is her still hanging? I'm gonna call him now. Oh. Is there another call? A chair okay, good. Okay. Is still a chair. Even when there's no one sitting there. But a chair is not a call. And a house is not a home like this, no one. I heard it was great. It would have been nice for Hal to have seen that. And it was such a love. It was a love.
Oh, was he? Yes. Oh, did you know John's a doctor? Uh, we, we would have that conversation. He trained in that place. I'm a clinical social worker. Social work. My yes. sister is too. Oh, yeah? How, does, how do you keep Julie balanced? Hey, but John was telling me he trained in that place. Yeah, sure. 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 There's nothing there. My sister's from Columbia. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Please. Hold on. Thirty. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell her we were also going to talk about Barnes and Noble. We're going to talk about Barnes and Noble too. And the network. And the network. Okay. Hold on. Dr. Orchestra. My whole career. Oh, in May. Betty Smith called for you, sir. Great place for me. Give us a call, 212-219-9695. What song's after this, Jim? Number three. Is that right, Jim? We hung for you. That's uh, Jimmy Webb and Neil Sedaka. It's Andrew Martin. Hey, Andrew. I'm so sorry I'm no, late. No, 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 don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, you know, John. John. We're completely for cocktail. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Hey, Andrew. Hi, Janice. Hello, my darling. Hello, Janice. 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 I don't want to get in trouble with that. <laughs> I don't want the preempting show. <laughs> I want Great to get Julie to Bud here. WPAT. We love that song. Great writers, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Good writers. That's Thanks. what the CD is all about. They wrote the songs. Right. My CD will be out in three weeks. They wrote the songs. And it's really paying tribute to the great writers. Because we want to talk about the talent all the time, but we'd have nothing to do without the great writers. Did you have any relationship at all with Barry Manilow or Barry Manilow's Well, Herbie did. Andrew? Herbie was Barry Manilow's gym teacher. <laughs> do you is have this or Herbie? what? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. And and did Edna and, and Edna Manilo when she did her cabaret acts in the eighties, was she was she part of that whole scene with the piano bars? Sure, sure oh, she yeah. was. Yes, yeah, she was. She very much was, yeah. And, and did, what kind of a relationship did you I have didn't with I didn't have a lot of a relationship with, with his mom as much as well Herbie knew knew Barry very, very well and I knew Barry through the industry. Probably one of the nicest people in show business is Barry Manilow. Very nice guy, yeah. really straightforward. I recorded one of his songs. Well, I recorded about two or three of his songs, but one of them in particular I recorded in when October goes and 
and and I, I sent it to Barry. He wrote me the loveliest letter back. He's just the sweetest guy in the world. Herb, tell us how, how Julie Budd keeps a balance in her life and sort of has that fortitude and strength to keep going after all of these great years. Well, uh, one thing about Julie is she's always had that uh, desire to do good work. And it was never about the money. It was never about... Uh, you know, the, the, the glamour or the, you know, it was always about the art. It was always about the, uh, uh, you know, all, all about the work. And uh, as, as far as her uh, keeping, uh, you know, her eye on the ball and everything, uh, Julie came from great parents. And uh, both her parents were terrific people. As a matter of fact, Julie's dad became uh, one of my best friends. Really? And uh, Julie has two sisters who are terrific girls. And so the family was great. And uh, I myself came from a, a great family. And I think that's the key to everything, you, you know, uh, especially, you know, you know, today with so many problems and everything. Uh, it's really the family. And uh, Julie had a great family, and she still does. Uh, she's still very close with her sisters. And uh, yes. and as I say, Julie's eye was always on the uh, artistic end of things and not how much money we mm -hmm. can make. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's, it's been great. She's had a great uh, uh, motivation, great background. And how about some of, the, uh, some of the great stuff you've done for the Four Seasons? Could you uh, tell us a little bit about it? Well, uh, uh, Bob Crew, who wrote all the Four Seasons sets and produced them, <clears throat> uh, he, he gave me a job. I was teaching in high school at the time. As a matter of fact, Barry Lickelow was one of my students. And uh, I, I quit teaching and went into the music business. And, God, I hate to tell you how many years ago. It was back in the 60s. And, and Barry, and, may I interject that Barry, every time he sees Herbie, he still has to call him Mr. Bernstein. Yeah. <laughs> Because this is like a, like a, my cousin Jeffrey's bar mitzvah. Yes. We could go on all night. Well, we could. Well, one more thing, but I'm going to introduce Andrew Martin. Oh yeah, Herbie, you um, know who's here? Andrew Martin's here. That's right. And you're Hi, Herb. Andrew. just just a, just a quick thing with uh, your relationship with Jerry Lewis. Oh God, I, I know Jerry Lewis since I'm 12 and a half years old. One of the nicest, smartest, kindest men in show business. Now that's another example of you know. Um, you, you're not sure, you know, what kind of a personality you're going to meet when you when when you meet this person because he's a legend and so everybody has a, a different opinion of this person. I, yours. Well, I have to tell you something. Consistently over all the years that I've known Jerry Lewis, I have found him to be a, a wonderful, spectacular human being and a brilliant artist. And I really, really want to thank him over the years for teaching me so much and for allowing me to be part of his production. And a brilliant interviewer, Mr. Andrew Martin is here. Absolutely, oh, everybody. Andrew's here. Andrew. Well, uh, finally, all the Fakaka <laughs> subways went crazy. <laughs> they let me off on <laughs> Red Tree Broadway. Story. I didn't know how to get here. But this is, you know, this is amazing. It's, it's a funny triumvirate because we had, uh, I had Karen Wyman on the show about three weeks ago. And of course, Karen... Great. Karen and Julie have been friends since they were both teenagers and, and both, you Good know, friends, good friends. Good friends. And then about a month or so ago, I interviewed Ann Rizzelli. Oh, my gosh. Who, of course. <laughs> That's Herbie's, 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 Herbie's family. <laughs> and, you know. 
Oh my god. Well, I wish you would have told her I said hello. That would, that would have been good. Hey, Herbie, nice to have you part of I'm going to see you later. Also, I wanted to mention Ted with uh, his advertiser, one of his sponsors, this Italian restaurant. <laughs> yes. Jimmy Roselli was my father in law. Roselli was his father in law. See that, Kenny? Yeah. Isn't now, that something? while I have you there, let me just read another commercial. Enzo's Italian Restaurant, <laughs> since you brought it up. 1998 Williams Bridge Road in the heart of the Bronx. The greatest Italian food here in New York City. Give John a call up there. Say you heard this show, and we'll definitely like to broadcast live there soon. 718-409-3828. Enzo's Restaurant is a perfect place for classic Italian dinner. Located in the Morris Park section of the Bronx, just minutes away from Arthur Avenue. Open for lunch and dinner. Our classic Italian menu has been recognized as one of the top in, in the Bronx. So make a reservation now. Enzo's Italian Restaurant, 1998 Williams Bridge Road in Bronx. That's 718-409-3828. 718-409-3828. Before I forget, I don't want to forget, you're, you're going to be at Barnes & Noble. Tell us when that is, uh, April, Julie. April 28th at 630, 86th Street and Lexington Avenue. April 28th, I'm going to be premiering my new CD, They Wrote the Songs, and I'm bringing my whole band into the store. And then on May 15th through May 18th, I'm going to be at the Metropolitan Room here in New York, and I'm going to put the CD on stage. We're going to We're going to do all the music. Isn't and that amazing? amazing? It'll be great. It'll yeah. be great. You have a great website. I love your website. Oh, thank you. It's, it's only a week old. It's brand new. Tell Every, us about that. Well, it's it's very interactive. Lots of video. And there's a 10-minute video of like my whole career of working with all these people who I've worked with. Oh, is that the montage? With the, no, no, there's a new one. You've got to put Andrew one. Martin on your, oh, on Andrew, your website. You, and it, when you first click in, it's a brand new montage. <laughs> oh, wow. It's a brand new one. And But but really, I'd love to see everybody on April 28th at Barnes & Noble, 86 in London. And uh, I'll premiere my new CD. They wrote the songs, and do come down to the Metropolitan Room because it's one of the great rooms here in New York. May fifteenth to May eighteenth. I've got a book coming out soon about your life and about the life of all the great people you've met, Merv Griffin. Yes, and yes, I'll Bill be. Cosby I'll be and Andrew, that'll, that'll be for next and year. And Andrew Morton. Could I ask one thing? Because you and I have <laughs> talked about this as, as just as friends. Sure. There was somebody who meant a great deal to you, and uh, who I'm talking about specific, specifically is Waylon Flowers. Oh my God! Yes. Yes. One of the brilliant, brilliant artists. We lost him way too soon. Way too soon. I loved that man. And you were on his show. You were on Madam's Place. I was Place. on Madam's Place. We also became great friends. And we also, you know, during that sort of late 70s period, we worked at a great place called the Grand Finale. Uh-huh. I remember mm -hmm. the Grand Finale. Yep. Sure. Yep. Yep. Oh, they're playing music. We're off. You like that? It's a beautiful song. You know that song well. <laughs> We'd love to have you back again soon Thank you. with your new CD. I guess please. Love May, that. And hopefully with Nancy Sinatra and Herb Bernstein. Yes, please. Herb, thank you. And Herb, hopefully you can call in next week. We have the Danny Styles Tribute Show next Friday night at 7 p.m. Okay. I'll be here too. Call in, Herbie. Thank you. I, I want to thank you for having me on thank the show. You, oh, thank, thank you, Julie. Thank you, Mr. Jim Tracker. Jim Tracker. Jim, 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 Jim Kenny Lupo. Him. And singer. I'm going to get the microphone to you. Next time. Only this time I hope I see you. 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 I hope I see you